Recently, there was a set that was going to be sold called the GMK95 Neon. It was a set that was inspired by the Nike Air Max 95 in the neon colorway. Being true to the original inspiration, it used the color palette of the shoe and had light gray alphas with dark gray modifiers, both with a signature neon green for the text. It's not completely clear how long it took for Edwin to come up with a finalized design, but the earliest post I could find was one from four months ago showing an earlier design that featured a different green for the arrow keys. Through feedback from some users, he eventually decided to use a neon green instead of the original darker green, as it felt out of place and looked kind of awkward in the set. It wasn't the most hyped set, which can be observed through the user interaction on the GeekHack IC, as well as the Reddit post, but it seemed like a nice clean set that happened to also intersect with another popular hobby, sneakers. Unlike some other ICs that I've seen before, it appears that the designer did spend some time in creating a thoughtful and complete IC, explaining the theme of the set as well as providing other background information and renders for people to kind of get a feel of how the set would look on their keyboard. Desk mats were also created to be sold along with a keycap set to let people complete their setup, and there were a couple of collaborations with other creators, with two Rama keycaps and a collaboration with Zuzu cables for custom coiled cables. Everything appeared to be going along well with the vendors, and the group by date was set and approaching fast. But then on April 5th, 2021, Canon Keys announced that they would be dropping out of the group by due to statements from the designer that stated that he had intended to infringe copyrights with this set. When this news was first announced, many people thought that it was stupid of Canon Keys to do so. Although it had been announced recently that GMK was starting to be more stringent on sets with potentially copyrighted material, the GMK95 Neon had already received a quote which meant that GMK deemed that the set was safe enough for them to produce. Furthermore, although the novelties definitely were inspired by the Nike shoe, many people didn't feel like it actually violated the copyright. I personally have no experience nor knowledge with copyright laws, so I won't speak about this, but there was a general air of confusion since it appeared to come out of nowhere. The Canon Key statement was very professional, but left out a lot of the specifics, which instead led to people being upset that the set they wanted to buy was no longer being sold. Discord messages were then posted by some people who were more informed about the details which explained what had happened. It showed screenshots from Z Frontier, a vendor and a forum that is mainly used by Chinese members in the community, where Edwin was trying to promote his set. In the post, he listed two production updates. One, to make sure that Nike would not be profiting from his set, and two, a kidding update. In the comments, he replied to Chinese users and repeatedly said, let's violate copyright to retaliate at Nike due to current events. For those who aren't aware, China is currently encouraging its citizens to boycott certain companies who are refusing to buy cotton from the Xinjiang region. The reason behind these companies boycotting Xinjiang cotton is due to reports that it is being produced through using forced Uyghur labor. Uyghurs are an ethnic minority who live in the Xinjiang region, who predominantly identify as Muslim. Since 2015, it has been estimated that over a million Uyghurs have been imprisoned in internment camps, or what China likes to call re-education centers. Cotton is the main product of the Xinjiang region and many brands had bought cotton sourced from that region to produce their clothes. However, due to recent news and pressure from the western market, many brands came out and recently stated that they would no longer be buying cotton from Xinjiang to make their clothes. Many major brands stepped out and made a public statement, some which backed down, after seeing public backlash that occurred to H&M. There's a lot more to the story that is currently developing that I won't be able to get into, so I'll leave some links in the description below if you want to read up more on the issue. Mods in the Discord group brought these issues up and asked Edwin to make a statement or response to clarify his stance and explain his comments, so that they could come up with a verdict on whether he should be banned as a result of his actions. Edwin's response appeared to backtrack from his original statement about violating Nike IP and trying to retaliate against the company, and stated that he was only trying to troll the users on Z Frontier with his comments since buying the GMK95 Neon and supporting Nike does not have any correlation, which is true. Since the GMK95 Neon is not an official collaboration with Nike, and is only a set inspired by their shoe, Nike would not be profiting off of the sales for the set. However, the main issue is how he tried to go about it, and the statements he had made. By making the statement that he is purposely violating copyright to retaliate at Nike, he is putting everyone involved in the project at risk. Nike has been very famous for being proactive in defending their IP, and by showing intent to violate that means that you are opening yourself up to legal action. There is now recorded evidence of you saying these words, which prevents you from using the argument that your product was simply inspired by Nike's shoe. The other argument that was made by the mods involved the morality of purposely taking advantage of nationalistic pride to promote his set, 
which also essentially supports the use of forced Uyghur labor. Edwin tried to defend his statements, but his explanation wasn't very strong, and also didn't solve the issue. He alienated a portion of the Western community by making a statement that indirectly supported forced labor, and then alienated the Chinese market by rolling back on his statement and saying that he was just trying to troll the Chinese users on Z Frontier so that they would buy his set. Vendors for other regions began to drop out of the group buy as well, and as a result, Edwin had no choice but to cancel the group buy. Some people might feel compelled to blame these vendors for the cancelling of the group buy since they believe that the set did not actually violate Nike copyright. But you have to remember that these vendors are not big companies by any standard. A potential lawsuit from a big corporation like Nike can be devastating because it will require that you hire a lawyer to defend yourself against Nike's team of highly paid and experienced lawyers. Even if the case were to ultimately be dismissed, the cost of legal representation would probably be too much for these vendors to bear. And even if they survive financially, they'd probably take a big hit. Furthermore, they'd also be liable to pay for any legal fees if GMK were to be named in a lawsuit. I found an explanation on the GMK95 Neon Geek hack that explains the issue quite well. I was not able to verify the information, but according to Duke Esquire on Geek Hack, whenever GMK produces a set, they require that vendors indemnify them. This means that if GMK is involved in a lawsuit over copyrighted material for a keycap set, vendors such as Canon Keys would be liable to pay for any reparations that the other party is seeking as a result of IP violations, and also pay for any legal fees that GMK incurs. Due to Nike's past history of pursuing legal damages to protect its IP, it was wiser for Canon Keys and other vendors to simply drop the set and avoid a potential lawsuit. After this all happened, many people were looking to see if Edwin had made an official response to what was happening. And on April 6, 2021, he made an apology on the Geek Hack IC. I'll be leaving a link to his full apology in the description below, and if you are interested in the issue, I recommend that you read it in full. He apologizes for his statements and admits that they were very irresponsible, as it opened him and the vendors to potential lawsuits. He wanted to convince the Chinese community to buy his set, and changed the idea that his set was going to allow Nike to profit from the sales, but rather than helping the set, his actions led to its death. He also defends Canon Keys by saying that they were extremely supportive in helping him in the creation of the set, and even offered to transfer their work to another potential vendor after pulling out of the group buy. Reading the apology, I felt like he was being pretty sincere. Unlike what got him into the situation in the first place, it appears to me that he has taken the time to reflect over his actions and then wrote this apology. I mean, I definitely could be wrong, and maybe he has no regret over his actions, and maybe even feels a little bitter at the community over what had happened. But I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. What he did was incredibly stupid and should be a lesson to be learned for those who are looking to run their own group by. I'm sure that there will be many people who are apprehensive in supporting his next project, and may have lost trust in him, which is an extremely bad thing in this hobby. It's definitely going to be an uphill battle for him to regain that trust, and if he comes up with a new set, I'm sure that many people will probably mention this incident, which may discourage people from joining in on this group buy, or vendors from being the proxies for his set. But personally, I wish him the best, and I'm looking forward to his next project.